Hello, hello, Mortimers here and welcome back to the Speed Chess Championship 2020. This time I would like to show you uh, another game from the quarterfinals. Hikaru Nakamura as white uh, is going to play against Vladimir Fedusev, uh, who's gonna play of course as black. And this game includes the best move ever played in the Speed Chess Championship in the history of this tournament. So this is something very, very special. This is why I would like to show you. This is how the commentators Daniel Wrench and Robert Hess uh, watch at this at this move and they were just shocked and impressed so without further ado, let me share the game with you. We have B3, Nimzo Larsen attack, and of course, uh, every player have some favorite uh, continuations here. We have C5, English variation. We have Bishop B2, we have D6, and Knight F3. We have E5, uh, creating the, the center this way. We have E3, we have Knight F6, and now uh, C4 uh, is of course possible, Bishop E2 is possible, but a white also can strike in the center immediately it's not that great however it was played plenty of times as well so we have d4 c takes on d4 e takes on d4 and now of course black goes for e4 and having this pawn can be really painful for for white very uncomfortable especially that the knight cannot defend the position of the king anymore so we have knight f to d2 and now d5 strengthening the pawn on the e4 and immediately hikaru went for c4 undermining the base of the uh, of this little pawn chain we have bishop b4 now pinning the knight the knight of course is attacking e4 so once this pawn disappears this pawn gonna be a uh, pretty much very weak pawn we have knight c3 and now uh, fiduciary just castle and now the position is extremely tricky in the database we have one game where black won however uh, what white should do in this position it's very tricky position so we have one game where a3 was played and then uh, black doesn't waste any time played bishop, bishop c3 bishop c3 and then knight c6 uh, and then what white want to do is of course castle so bishop e2 trying to castle but now we have d takes on c4 knight takes on c4 and now look at this knight d5 attacking the bishop so bishop has to be moved and now queen g5 so this is the main idea you cannot castle because bishop h3 is coming and black gonna win the exchange so g3 but then bishop h3 and there is no castle at all and black won that game so really but white have to be very very careful here this is why hikaru nakamura plays bishop e2 immediately that's a very tricky position we have rook e8 we have the castle knight c6 and now finally uh white gonna exchange this this base of this of this little chain now we have knight d5 knight d5 c takes on d5 making a space for the for the knight queen d5 and the knight goes to very natural c4 square uh, and now we have queen g5 so we already know that idea bishop h3 is coming some mating ideas on the on the g2 and if g3 is placed then of course uh white gonna lose the exchange so this is why we have bishop c1 kicking the the queen so queen g6 but now bishop h5 so the queen cannot stay on the on the g file which is the main idea uh, and we have queen f6 bishop b2 still harassing the queen now d5 is coming with the attack on the queen very uncomfortable so we have queen g5 and here hikaru said okay uh, no more bishop h3 we have king h1 uh, and now this bishop has to be somehow developed so we have bishop e6 and here hikaru should go for the for the knight e3 very solid move preparing d5 and uh, black actually uh, have to think what to play next but this pawn gonna be pretty much very weak and the position gonna be uh, very solid for white however we have bishop c1 uh, and now queen d5 attacking putting the pressure on d4 we have bishop b2 now defending in twice uh, and now centralizing the rook rook a to d8 now attacking the pawn for the third time uh, now we have knight e3 attacking the queen uh, so the queen of course cannot take the pawn on d4 that would be uh, not really great so we have queen g5 still 
going to the, with the queen on the on the king side and now we have f4 so uh, not much choice here by Fedor Siaev. he has this weak pawn so just exchange that but the problem is now we have queen f3 triple attack on the on the very poor f7 pawn so black have to react we have g6 now weakening the dark squares and look at this monster bishop this is just you know it looks very very bad for black we have bishop g4 bishop is under attack uh, and now f5 so what to play as white what would you play in this position as white is a very very tricky position so if you play something like bishop h3, there is the problem, because after knight d4, uh, the queen is under attack. If you exchange this bishop, you achieve nothing. You want to keep the bishop on the on the board, so probably something like queen b7. Uh, maybe trying some ideas uh, this way, uh, but of course bishop f8 uh, can, can be played and everything is fine with the position. And uh, black actually stands much better, the pieces are more solid this bishop is shooting nowhere the rooks are centralized uh, of course black have to be careful uh, but at least there are no checkmates on the on the g7 so that should be uh, everything okay but hikaru doesn't care about the bishop he went for d5 and now the point is that after f takes on g4 uh, we have knight g4 and here what to play you cannot take the knight with the bishop because you're gonna get checkmated this would be the checkmate uh so you have to take with the with the g4 but now we have queen f6 threatening the checkmate on g7 but also on an h8 and you cannot just simply uh, block two of these moves so in this position vladimir fidyosyev resigned uh, no, he didn't resign because we wouldn't uh, think about the best move ever played in the in the speed chess. Actually, he found uh, the defense. Uh, and this is pretty much incredible. I don't want you to pause the video because I believe everybody see that already, that the only move in the position is actually, boom, queen g2. And this is the, the tweet. So chess.com platform wrote that, uh, is this shocking queen sacrifice from Fedosyev the best move ever played in speed chess? That's possible because this is really, really spectacular. Uh, of course, there is not much choice. So we have queen g2 now bishop d5 with check and now we have rook f3 because this checkmate is still uh, on the board however a uh, better defense actually would be king g1 and the point is that after bishop c5 only then rook f2 and after bishop f2 King f2 of course cannot take because the rook gonna pin the queen, so that's the very simple solution. Queen f2 and then play rook e4 and this position is uh, considered as slightly better for white, but white also have to be very precise. So for example, you cannot go back with the, with the queen to f6, this is losing because the rook uh, g4 and this attack together with the, with the bishop on this diagonal and this rook on f8 also gonna win the queen so that's not possible h3 is necessary here uh, and then uh, black can actually bring the knight to the game and that's gonna be uh, very very dangerous especially with this rook f8 the knight jumping around and so on and and this bishop on the light squares so probably bishop e5 rook e5 and this position is considered as a as a dead draw but of course it's a lot to play still we have this bishop we have pair of rooks so the position is very dynamic and uh, you know only for the engine it can be you know that draw uh, however hikaru went for rook f3 and this is losing move this is not that great so as you see queen g2 was just beautiful and uh, now we have rook e2 with check and attack on this bishop and this bishop is crucial in the in the delivering a checkmate on g7 uh, or even h8 so we have king g3 uh, and now first we have bishop d6 another check we have rook f4 blocking and here 
if you do save actually miss the the best the the shortest way to the victory uh, bishop f4 now bishop f4 uh, of course ki king cannot take because of of this pin so uh queen f4 and only then just simply take this bishop on b2 and after let's say rook f1 play something like uh, rook g2 with check king h3 and so on there are no mates on f uh, f7 there are no mates of f8 all of the squares of course are controlled by the by the black pieces so there are no problems here and uh, black have you know extra piece and completely winning position especially the king is really trapped over there and can be checkmated pretty much uh very very easily so this was the the best way to win however uh, fiduciev was afraid of the bishop so we have rook b2 queen b2 and now b5 winning this rook as well uh, we have rook f1 g takes on f4 and now the king is under attack we have king h3 we have bishop e5 now taking uh, this very important diagonal from the queen we have rook g1 with the check and now the engine suggests okay go with the king to h8 you're gonna be safe there but uh, in this case i would probably also not trust the engine the rook is controlling all uh, all the g file and if the queen find the way somehow to get on this diagonal or maybe on the seven rack it can be very very uh you know difficult to defend it can be a especially risky that this is blitz game and both of the players have i think this was three minutes so uh, it would be very risky king f7 more natural human move now we have queen e2 and now bishop e6 with check and if white tries to uh, escape with the king is not really possible king g2 rook g8 and this rook gonna be lost uh the, the king has to stay around but then we're gonna have one check uh then we're gonna have another check and of course after king f3 uh the rook is lost uh, for free so it's it doesn't work the, the king has to go um to the h4 this is what hikaru played but it's still a losing position we have bishop f6 king h5 uh we have rook d5 with the check we have king h6 so the king goes to the h6 already and now we have knight e5 uh, we have queen e4 by Hikaru, so Hikaru goes after the, the pawn, so we have knight g6, and now what is the problem? Whatever white plays, actually black has the checkmate in two moves. Uh, so for example, if you try something like queen g2, then you're gonna have bishop g7, and then there is the checkmate with the with the knight. So Hikaru didn't find the, the way to solve that problem other way. This is actually the, the only way is rook g6, and h takes on g6, and now queen g6. We also have king e7, and now queen e4. So rook and, and two bishops should be very easy win for black. How would you win this position? It's very important question because it's not that easy as it seems to be. It's still a lot to play. But the most important asset is the pawn on f4. So what Fiduciev should go is simply rook f5. Maybe he was afraid uh, that he gonna get some perpetual, but it's not really possible here because after queen uh, b7, then bishop d7 you can try to bring the king closer uh but black just gonna move the move the pawn to f3 uh, and then deliver a couple of checks queen b4 king e8 uh queen e4 then let's say bishop e5 and queen a8 king e7 and there are no more checks these two bishops and the rook are, are enough actually to block uh the checks from all the directions so queen a7 f2 and this pawn gonna promote cannot be stopped and gonna win the game so uh rook f5 was the way to victory however we have bishop g5 with the check we have king g6 uh, and now king d7 we have also queen a4 with check king e7 we have queen b4 with check king e8 uh, and now queen b7 and here again this is the last chance for fedosev to win the game and the winning move is f3 is possible this is one of the moves but the most solid is actually rook f5 now rook f5 with the idea of course of pushing this pawn and now even you have something like queen c6 then the bishop goes to d7 and there is no way for white actually to do the perpetual check because we have the rook we have the two bishops so it's not possible uh to deliver another and another checks um in this position and this pawn again gonna win the game however we have bishop e7 
7 and actually uh, Fiduciev blundered this very important pawn. We have queen b8 now forking the king and the, and the pawn, king d7 and now queen f4. So the most important assets of Fiduciev actually uh, just vanished. We have a5 and now h4. So it's Hikaru who actually have very, very dangerous passed pawn. We have bishop d6 attacking the queen, now queen a4 with the check, check king e7, we have queen e4, uh, we have bishop e5, we have h5, uh, bishop f6, now we have a, a little bit maneuvers, queen e3, uh, we have bishop e5, uh, queen g5, one check here, uh, king d7, then we have h6, now we have bishop d4, we have queen f4, we have bishop f5 check now uh, and here actually how to continue as white is it possible to win by white actually not really uh king f7 is losing immediately because after king f7 we're gonna have bishop h7 and there is the problem that the rook gonna come to the f5 and deliver a checkmate and not much you can do that the engine actually recommends something like a3 uh, and then after rook f5 just exchange that but we're gonna have two bishops to, so they're gonna win the game even you play something like king g8 and you try to win the bishop it's not enough because after king e7 you are in the mating net and if you push uh you're gonna get checkmated bishop e6 that, that this actually would be the checkmate uh, what Hikaru could try actually to do is king g5, but it looks very, very risky. So first thing first, uh, how black have to play in this position is something like bishop h7. Just stay uh, with the bishop on this diagonal, uh, deliver some checks, for example, king g4, uh, then bishop f5 and so on. So uh, even, even if king f3, uh, there is no way that this pawn actually gonna advance. So that's one of the idea. Uh, big mistake would be go after these pawns because this actually would be losing because if you dare to take that pawn if you stay on this diagonal it's fine but if you take uh then white gonna get the initiative gonna win the rook or gonna win the the bishop and there is no way to stop it queen f7 let's say king c6 then queen e8 with the check uh let's say king c5 and now queen c8 and you cannot go and hide over there uh because there is always queen c4 winning the rook so you have to play something like king b6 but then your bishop is trapped and then uh you're gonna lose the game so that could be a try but of course Fedosev would just stay probably with this with this bishop here uh, but Hikaru didn't want to risk he just see uh, okay that would be too risky so I just exchange we have queen f5 rook f5 king f5 and now this position is completely draw uh, but we have a couple of more moves so king d6 king e4 uh, we have now king c5 defending we have a3 we have bishop b2 going after the pawn but now we have h7 so this this pawn cannot be taken because of the promotion this is why we have king b5 uh, we have now king d5 trying to you know get some opposition flanking the king uh, but of course black have the bishop so can make a lot of moves with the bishop only so bishop c3 we have king e4 now going after the bishop we have king c5 we have king d3 bishop b2 b4 now uh, and after a takes on b4 a takes on b4 king b4 uh, we have couple of more moves here king f5 king d6 uh, king g6 uh, king e7 and here hikaru promote to the queen and the game ended with the draw because of the insufficient material of course the bishop cannot checkmate the the white king so this is a draw so the game was beautiful and this was really really shocking queen sacrifice in completely lost position and uh, fiduciary found a way uh, to actually get to the winning position so this was shocking the game ended with the draw but that was of course blitz against hikaru nakamura he found the resources you had to be very very precise and that was not easy now i would like to show you the quarterfinals what just happened so here we go again we have Hikaru Nakamura against Wesley So and Magnus Carlsen against Maxim Vasil Lagraf in the semi-finals so if you don't want to miss more games from the Speed Chess Championship 2020 press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one